Whiskey River runs dry And we'd still have rainstorms But there'd be no crying blue eyes No red-headed stranger In a world without a Willie, I am too close to the ground. No, I don't want to know how. Makers on ice, chase it with a lucky strike. I can be your whiskey, I can be your cigarette. You're trying to forget If your loving cup needs filled up She left you bone dry and deep Baby, I can be your whiskey How you doing, Erin? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Good, good. Thank you so much for joining. Super excited about this one, Erin. Well, thanks so much for having me. Absolutely. So, you know, let me quickly introduce you to my audience. I mean, you've, you're a writer, singer, songwriter. You know, your last album, Faulkner Con Country, came out last year. Heck of an album. You just released a great cover, uh, Fishing in the Dark, in the summer. We were jamming to it all the, in July awesome. and August. And, uh, you know, you're, you've written some incredible gems, Aaron. You know, uh, you know, Last Call from Leon Womack, Luke Bryant, you know, Alan Jackson, Randy Travis. Man, you've done a lot and it's all good stuff. So we're Thank super you so excited. much. Absolutely. Absolutely, Aaron. So, you know, we'll get some of the music. We want to talk about Faulkner country, all that good stuff. But first of all, you know, how are you doing? How are you doing with COVID? How's your husband? How's your family? How's everybody? Yeah, you know, I feel really blessed considering all the all the craziness. It's definitely been uh, a challenging year, but I'm lucky enough to to still be making it all right. And my husband's job hasn't been affected, so good. we're doing OK. Um, yeah. And just really grateful for all the streaming kind of capabilities that happen now to keep connected with the fans and keep making music. Sure. 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 Now, is it only me, Aaron? Are you feeling this too? I feel like, I feel like currently, I mean, we're recording this in like mid, uh, I think we're mid November. I don't even know where we are anymore, but people, but people are like, like having a little bit again of like a down period. Right. Cause I feel like there, there's, there's like a second wave in Europe. And yeah. people are, again, kind of like, oh, God, it's going to be another minute, right? It's really tough because, I mean, this is a this is not a short, you know, bear down and get through it kind of thing. This is an ongoing struggle. And, you know, unfortunately, I think we're going to have quite a few many months left. Um, but, you know, I've just been trying to find ways to center myself, uh, reading and um listening to music, making music. Sure. Uh, Dolly Parton is somebody that I found a lot of joy from during this time. I mean, Dolly's always having a moment, but she's definitely having one yeah. right now. But uh, I read a couple of books on her, her autobiography and a couple others recently and just saw the Netflix documentary out. And right. uh, she always just has such a great attitude. So yes. I think being able to connect with some of your heroes or influences that way that um, kind of helps you take you out of the moment a little bit, yeah. or at least it has for me, has made it a little bit more bearable. Yeah, but you know, you have that impact on a lot of people, Erin. Like, I, I was talking to a friend who saw you in a cruise ship a few years ago. Oh, yes. Uh-huh. I and, love and, that. Yeah, and they, what they said is like, I, I, was, I, I told them like, yeah, I'm going to talk to this chick. Have you seen her? And it's like, I saw her. She performed at, in, in that cruise that they didn't stop talking about for years and she was so magnetic she people loved her that was that was oh, the man that is so awesome yeah I tell you what that cruise was amazing there were a lot of great folks that I met out there and it was really it was like a country music buffet I mean I've played it a couple of years now so um I felt kind of spoiled I got to play shows every day and then get to go see folks like Tanya Tucker Patty Loveless so uh, Wade Hayes and stuff play shows so it was just country music heaven out there on the yeah. water <laughs> and then the sun said yeah i gotta yeah. check out 
Yes, absolutely. That sounds great. But yeah, I, I meant to tell you that. Like someone just told me that how great you were. But anyway. It's so cool. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, you know, Erin, you grew up in central Arkansas um, in Conway. Mm-hmm. Um, and it seems like, you know, music was like your destiny from such a young age, right? Like, I mean, is it true that like at three years old, um, you know, as the folklore goes, you went to dinner with your with your family at the Cock of the Walk, this famous restaurant <laughs> in Arkansas and Nashville. And, uh, you know, there's a music guy playing. Your parents turn around. You're not there. Where's Aaron? Where's the baby? The baby's on the stage. <laughs> That's what I've been told. I obviously I don't remember this. But uh, it doesn't surprise me. (laughs) Uh, I just, I fell in love with music and especially country music so young. Um, I listen to a lot of records. I have a lot of music lovers in my family. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, it's funny. Just by the time I was even like four or five years old, I was renting like Patsy Cline's biography and a collection of Katie Oslin music videos instead of normal kids stuff <laughs> where's waldo and i say like, no i'm into you yeah know, i want to know about loretta lynn's like you know yes. upbringing. <laughs> good for you that's great <laughs> oh man that's awesome and you know of course you started with the piano right uh and then you moved to, to guitar i did yeah um i took uh some theory and piano um and got just enough to be dangerous yeah. and then <laughs> uh guitar is really that's what's intrigued me sure. from the beginning and so uh, graduated up to that. It's a little easier to carry too. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And cooler too, a little cooler. And, and you had a teacher, right? Like to tell us a little bit about this teacher who I think passed now, uh, but who had a big, big impact on your life with the guitar. Yeah, Terry Holmes. I took, I, I think I'll ended up taking about six months of lessons from him, uh, but we traded letters afterwards, some back and forth. And he had played with folks like Chet Atkins and Andrew Harris, uh, uh, just a great guitar player and, and person. And he was the first person that really encouraged me writing my own music. Um, Cause when I went to him, I was like, well, okay, I want to start learning to play guitar, but like, how do I, I write these songs and I hear these melodies, but how do I do that right. together? And he really encouraged me with that and helped me figure out how to do that. And um, he would, you know, pull in, I was, he gets taught lessons at the local college and he'd pull in other music students and be like, oh, you got to listen to this girl's song, you know, and oh, cool. being 13 and having some cool college kid come in and be like, yeah, that's pretty cool. You know, <laughs> that was, yeah. that was it. And uh, he really encouraged me. Um, and I still have some letters from him while he was sick with uh, cancer, just really encouraging me to follow my passion and my dreams and that this was something I could do. Uh, for a livelihood and that was the first time I'd ever really made that connection because so many times you know you hear people on the radio you see people on tv and uh I don't know being from a small town in central Arkansas you you don't really think about oh like that's a real like you can do that like right that's not just a fairy tale (laughs) kind of thing Mm -hmm. and uh so that yeah it really had a huge impact that's great that everyone should have someone like that that's really cool that you had them um Mm -hmm. So, of course, you start, you know, you learn how to write songs, you know, you become great for Arkansas, but then you go to Tennessee, you go to middle uh, Tennessee State University. Mm-hmm. Um, it Was it, I don't want to say, I guess intimidating is the word that comes to mind. Was it like a little bit of a wake up call that you go to Nashville and you realize like, oh my God, like I thought I was good, but damn, I need to get better. Yeah, I mean, there definitely uh, were those moments And I just kind of, I didn't even play out the first year I was there and partially because of that, because you get here and you see, I mean, there is incredible songwriters and performers on every corner, your, your plumber, your waiter, everybody, they're all writing hit songs. And um, so I really just tried to soak it all in that first year, go out to as many shows and writer nights as I could and um, listen to people. It was really great going to MTSU, we had a lot of resources there, but it also seemed like the music industry here is just so open. And so if you would message somebody who worked in the business uh, as a publisher or different things that I was figuring out kind of, and say, I'm a student at MTSU, could I buy you coffee or lunch sometime and ask you about what you do and get that real world perspective on it, which was so cool. That's so cool, Erin. Okay, I, like I want to talk about your music in a second, but I want to pick your brain here because I think 
I, I, I feel like I feel like you're so great with this, and I'm so fascinated by this by this process about songwriting. When you're working, Erin, and, and and I say working because people look at you and they see the CMAs last night, and and people think it's all fun and glamour, but it's work. It's a, it's a, it's real hard work um, mm -hmm. to write a song, to write to do all this stuff you do. Uh, do you when you're gonna write a song, Erin? Do you like go somewhere like you know nine to five, and you say, "All right, honey, I'm leaving." I'll see you at five. I'm going to go write a song or is it more like when the inspiration strikes you? You know, I've done some of both and it's funny because um, our jobs and all entertainment fields, uh, it's our job to make it look easy. It's our job to entertain people and show them the best parts. You know what I mean? I'm sure you know that with your podcast. I'm sure you get to do a little bit of editing here and there. And if you know something goes haywire, you're like, cool, well, no one's going to see that part. Um, <laughs> So I've written tons of songs that I don't ever want to play for anybody. <laughs> right. But um, yeah, I've done both. Uh, I've, uh, you know, when I moved here, the first year I was here, uh, there was a great, great writer, Harlan Howard, uh, that said that when you're starting off as a writer, you should just write a hundred songs and then throw them away. Mm, um, and, you know, some folks, I mean, there have been some times that, uh, you know, folks have had hits in those first hundred uh, because you don't you don't know anything about the rules or anything else but I think what he was saying is don't it's real easy to want to get hung up with a song you know what I mean and you're striving for that perfection and you want to get it just right yeah but sometimes it's just about going through the motions and practice that, sure. practicing and exercising that muscle a discipline absolutely uh, yeah and so I've done both uh you know I've written songs at two o'clock in the morning up uh, listening to songs and having that inspiration and I've also worked as a professional songwriter for years going down um, on music row uh, to a little writing room and uh, writing songs every day and both I think have their good points yeah because some of the days when I've felt the least creative or felt like oh I just I don't even want to do this today because I can't you know it's the magic doesn't seem there but you sit down, especially with someone else who's creative and maybe they tell you a story or they have an idea mm -hmm. or just the energy in the room sparks something yeah. and you end up with a great song that if you were just left to your own devices, maybe you wouldn't have gotten to that that day. That's fascinating. So maybe you think, OK, I'm going to write about X, you know, whatever in central Arkansas that I grew up with. And then you have this conversation and just completely different direction. I love that. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes, you know, uh, like the song for Luke Bryan, that was inspired by a billboard sign that I saw. And mm. I was out riding around, going to go to dinner with a friend of mine who's also a writer and uh, saw that billboard. And I was like, wait, why isn't this a song? And all of a sudden it just kind of hit me. Um, and I said, well, we're not going to go. To, we're going to have to order something because we're going to go write this right now. And so um you never know where those song ideas are going to come from. And to me, that's one of the things that, that is kind of humbling about being a writer yeah. because you try to show up with that, you know, your pen, your paper, your laptop, whatever, and put mm -hmm. in the time, but the muse, they are, they're always in control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I like that. Do you ever get self, self-conscious Erin? Because I mean, I remember when I was like, in college, I took a creative writing class and, and you know, I, I, they said, okay, dig deep to something like a trauma or something. And I said, all right, let's talk about my childhood and my dad, whatever. And I remember it was such a piece of crap. Mm -hmm. I threw it away. It was just terrible. And I got self-conscious and I thought, God, everyone is going to hate this. And it, it was just, I get, I just got so self-conscious. Does that ever happen oh, to you? Yeah. Like, do you go to your husband like at night and you're like, okay, honey, just pause, pause the game for a second. Is this crap? You know, uh, I definitely do get self-conscious and not just, I'm also have like terrible social anxiety that I've gotten better at. Um, but you know, especially with songs and things, I mean, you walk around here, you're, you're going to events, you're seeing shows yeah. with your heroes, folks yeah. that you idolize and look up to. And, um, you know, even playing my songs out at a show, if it's at a bar or coffee shop or whatever, it can be intimidating to share your thoughts and feelings with other people and wonder, you know, if it's, if it's worth their yeah. time, are they going to connect with it? Are they sure. going to say it's stupid? <laughs> and uh, it's funny because I think a couple of the songs that I've written, um, 
I kind of felt that way still with You Don't Know Jack, uh, the, mm-hmm. the Luke Bryan cut, even after I wrote it. I loved it. But for whatever reason at the time, I had a feeling of like, well, I love this. I don't know if other people are going to like this. Right. It's- and uh, that's definitely one that comes to mind that I did play for my husband and was like, I don't, I just don't know about this. And sometimes I also feel like right after you write a song, your mind has kind of gone through this whole movie in your brain and everything. Yeah. You've gotten so intense in it that you can't have a great perspective on it right away. True. You're too close to the trees, if you will, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, and I still do, man. I, you know, every time I get up and play a show and everything, it's a little bit, you know, you're, you're bearing your heart out there. Um, Yeah. I get nervous when I, when I write new songs and post them and ask folks, you know, what do you think about this? Because it is a very personal Sure. Kind of thing. And uh, fantastic. Well, Erin, I mean, that's fascinating. I, look, I could talk to you for days about this, you know, but that was really, really cool stuff. Let's talk about your music for a second. Um, yeah. I mean, Whiskey Town Crier, 2017 album, uh, just a gr- great album. I mean, I mean, that intro, you know, I mean, the first lines was that Whiskey Town, a time just like any other, like, like hooked. You put that and you're hooked it. and then, and then it's, it's fantastic. Um, it's three years old now, that album, but it was uh, one of your most successful to date. How do you look back on it today? You know, it opened a bunch of doors. It got your name out there. How do you look back Mm -hmm. on it? You know, I'm so proud of that record. And um, that and Faulkner County, my new record, we recorded both of those with Jim Moose Brown and Jamie Johnson uh, co-produced. And I said before, I feel like I'm a kid in a country music candy store. I mean, I get to work with people that, I grew up idolizing the music that they make. Yeah. I mean, I geek out when those players are in the studio. Um, I remember like on Whiskey Town Crier, uh, the great Dan Dugmore was in mm-hmm. playing steel guitar. Oh. And I asked him, I was like, well, could you kind of do like this Linda Ronstadt thing? And somebody kind of smirked and was like, well, you know, he played that. And I was like, I know that's why (laughs) I'm so intimidated to even like ask, like, don't worry inside. I'm like exploding. So good, Aaron. Your (laughs) albums are so good. I'm telling you, like it's everything. Obviously you, your voice, your songwriting, but makes sense. Every element, the musicians, you know, broken, use me again, whatever you play. It's just like, Jesus Christ. Thank you. This is such good Man, I feel so blessed that I've been able to just make the music that I really love and, uh, you know, just do it with the the writers and the musicians and everybody. Every part of it is just something I love and I'm so proud of. And, um, you know, if I never got to make any more music right now on, I feel like that looking back, I would say, yeah, I made I made the records that I'm 100 percent. This is what I wanted to do. Speaking of Aaron in the uh, country music candy store. You know, you say, okay, I, I want to pay, I want to cover, you know, nitty gritty is fishing in the dark. Mm-hmm. And you get um, Jeff Hanna to play <laughs> your cover <laughs> of Fishing in the Dark. Yes. Um, so, I mean, just a couple of questions here. You know, why did you decide to cover this song? And like, how awesome was that, that you got him and, you know, kind of. Yeah. Made it, like, yeah. You know, that is a song that I have loved for a long time. I remember being in high school, I went to boarding school. And I remember sitting in the halls with my classmates and I feel like that was the number one song that like, mm. everybody always wanted to hear. And I just love it. I love the imagery in it. Um, and I love, to me, the best songs, they seem simple, you know, they seem easy. Sure. And it just, it just has that light brush stroke painting those pictures and it makes you feel good. I can't listen to that song without smiling. True. And uh, I was actually playing a show at the Bluebird with Jeff and he made the mistake of saying, well, you know, if you ever wanted me to play on anything with you, uh, give me a call. Like, <laughs> and, okay, uh, call you right now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I said, <laughs> but are you serious? <laughs> 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 and uh, man, he was so awesome. He came and played on the song and, you know, I mean, it's just crazy getting to do that kind of stuff. Um, Wonderful. Great cover, this man. Is awesome. And it, and it came in July when, like, I think everyone needed that pick-me-up. And it was just yeah. so great. It was just so great, yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. Absolutely, Aaron. Well, listen, you've been so generous with your time. Um, is the rumor true you may play a song for us? Yes. 
So, oh my God, what a beautiful guitar you have there. What's uh, what's that guitar? Uh, this is a uh, 1964 Gibson J200. Mm, uh, always wanted one of these since I saw Emilio Harris playing them. Oh my God. And uh, I, encourage, you know, I encourage the audio audience to like just see the video portion because there is it's such a badass guitar. It's like a it's like a Lamborghini of like country guitars right now. This is beautiful. I really wish I knew the history of this guitar. <laughs> You know, um, I wish I could go back in time and know who played this and what its story is, but uh, mm -hmm. it's really special to me. And I was lucky enough to get to work out at the Grand Ole Opry for a couple of years and nice. then um, got to make my debut after that. And Jimmy Dickens has always been one of my heroes and yeah. especially working with him out there. It's just incredible. You know, um, he love loved that. music with all his heart the first day and the last day. You know what I mean? Nice. And so the night uh, that I debuted on the Opry, he signed it for me. Oh so, my uh, God. Oh my so God. So this Aaron, is Jimmy. You are having so much fun with your career and we are the beneficiaries of it because you're giving us such great stuff because you're having so much fun. We love it. Well, it, I mean, it is a dream come true. That's wonderful. All so right. what are you gonna play for us? What are you thinking? Well, let's see. I know you're a big fan of Fishing in the Dark. Should I do that one? Sure. I mean, I, 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 I always tell I always tell my guests like if, if you're feeling something, like play it, you know, because because uh, you gotta grab that moment. But if you're not feeling anything, sure. Well, you know, um, we're going into winter, which to be honest is not my favorite season. I enjoy the warm the warm sun. Uh, so this song maybe it'll keep somebody warm this winter. <laughs> nice. Lazy yellow moon coming up to the night, shining through the trees. Crickets are singing and lightning bugs are floating on the breeze. Baby, getting ready. Across the field where the creek turns back by the old stump road. I'm going to take you to a special place that nobody knows. Baby, get ready. Thank you. 
extraordinary. So, so good, Erin. What a treat. You. What a treat. What a, what a great guest. We had such a great time. Oh, well, thank you so much for having me, man. It's been awesome. Oh, it's been totally awesome. Thank you. I mean, we could have talked to you for, for days. So listen, Erin, have a great winter. You know, enjoy with your husband. Be safe. Continued success. And we can't wait to, you know, to see what the future holds. Thank you so much. And okay. thinking about you and your fans out there, hoping everybody's staying safe and uh, same. <laughs> Absolutely. Keep rocking. Take care. So thank you so much, Erin. Bye.